Right now, two of the most amazing scientific platforms ever launched into space are poised to expand human knowledge in different directions. The Webb Telescope, which points outward to peer into the beginnings of the universe, and the Parker Solar Probe, which in December became the first satellite to enter the sun's upper atmosphere. Both spacecraft use batteries made by a Pennsylvania company, Enersys, located in Reading. They make a lot of batteries for the aerospace industry. The customers we interact with are NASA, NASA Goddard, NASA JPL, Boeing, Lockheed, Northrop, uh, all the prime contractors. David Lucero is general manager for U.S. Space and Medical, the branch of Enersys, which builds the batteries for spacecraft. He's qualified. I think I'm probably the only person in the world that's built uh, batteries for both uh, the Hubble Space Telescope and James Webb Space Telescope. The facility that actually assembles the batteries is in Longmont, Colorado. While the process starts with standard lithium ion cells, each battery is a custom build. You know, you look at the real estate you have available, look at the power and energy requirements, and you look at the environment it's going to handle. It's hard to imagine two more different environments than the web, designed to function at minus 394 degrees Fahrenheit, and the Parker, which has to withstand temperatures up to 2,500 degrees. And yet... Batteries typically like a, a zero degree C to four, pl uh, plus 40 degrees C parameter. So sometimes we'll use heat dissipation plates to take the heat out, or we'll use uh, blankets to heat and, and actually create heat if we're seeing it's going to be too cold in an environment. In addition to building the battery and, and making it meet, fit their needs and application, uh, we run uh, you know, mission profile testing as well as uh, verification testing of that the performance is what we designed it to be. Despite the different conditions, the batteries on both spacecraft perform the same function, keep things running when the main power source shuts down. When the satellite eclipses from the sun, so basically the Earth is in between the sun and the satellite, they use battery power, right? And then, then when it gets back in the orbit where it's seeing the sun, it uses the solar panels, and the solar panels are also charging the battery. So which project was more challenging? Well, I think they both had their own challenges, right? Um, certainly, um, you know, the, the time uh, and the development of James Webb was more intricate, and it uh, took a longer time and uh, the design of the battery. But, the, you know, then the, the Parker Solar Pro, the environmental conditions that it was going to see and, and what we had to do to accommodate it, it, it was a, its own challenge.